As somebody that's been around the YouTube space for a long time, I find the Steven Crowder versus Daily Wire situation very interesting because I have seen this play out many times. I've been doing YouTube since 2010, and while I don't do it nearly as hardcore as I used to, uh, for five years, from 2010 to 2015, I did do this, do this as my full-time job. So I feel like I have a bit of business insight and understanding to how the online media um, space works and how it's monetized and how the sausage is made, whereas many people do not. And that's what I find so interesting about this situation is that the audience is very polarized. Uh, the average normal viewer that doesn't really understand what's going on is very much on the side of Steven Crowder. They very much see Steven Crowder as the good guy and the Daily Wire as the big, bad, corporate bad guys. And everyone else that understands how the sausage is made and how the lights are kept on are on the side of the Daily Wire. Now, I'm going to let you know my bias right off the start. I'm very much on the side of the Daily Wire. Let's get into that. So, Steven Crowder is absolutely appealing to the audience. He is very much pitching this as an us against them, the little guys versus the big guys. And that sounds great to the people that do not understand the business of online media with YouTube and, and in general, how the lights are kept on. And that's the dirty little secret when it comes to that news website you really like or that YouTube series you really like. A lot of the times, that doesn't make money. And I'm sure if you think about it right now, think back to all those really cool YouTube channels or shows or that thing you really liked that all of a sudden just stopped getting made and just got canceled randomly. And it, it's the fault of some evil bad guy and it's the evil corporation that shut it down. The reality of that situation is that that thing was not profitable and the corporation just did not want to run it at a loss forever. That's, that's the dirty little secret is that online media a lot of the times is not profitable. Or if it is profitable, it's usually because it was run at a loss for five years and eventually it built up enough of an audience. So Steven Crowder's situation is interesting because he has always had a larger conglomerate company he's worked under. He's always worked under someone else. So it's really hard to know if he genuinely was profitable. Now you may say what he has like a massive audience. He has whatever, 200,000 people that subscribe to his service. It's very expensive to make online media. He has staff. He has people that works for him. He has to provide healthcare to people. It's having, having employees is hard. It is hard to hire anybody. And it's tough. It is just expensive to do business in the United States. So is he making money genuinely? So a question you need to ask yourself is why did Steven Crowder even entertain the idea of joining the Daily Wire in the first place. If he cares so deeply about remaining independent, why did he even entertain this idea from the start? He said it wasn't about the money. It's not about the money. W what is it about? What is it about? Why are you even entertaining the thought of working for someone else? Why even, you know, sell any of your creative control to anyone if it's not about that? And the truth of it is, is that it is about that. The reality is, is that remaining independent means that you have less security and it's more work. You have to do everything yourself and all of the weight is on you. And the reason he wanted to join the Daily Wire is because he gets security. He gets the somewhat guaranteed paycheck, which is why he entertained that thought in the first place. So I find everything about the origin story of this whole conflict to be incredibly suspect. And we haven't even gotten into the worst parts. So whole th this whole drama gets kicked off with Steven Crowder being upset about a term sheet that he deemed to be unfair from the Daily Wire. Um, now, for you, those of you that are unfamiliar with a term sheet, it is not even a contract. It is like a pre-contract. It is like the negotiations before the first revision of a contract is even up. This is like the, the roughest of rough drafts. And what the average normal viewer does not understand about contracts is that both parties, both the Daily Wire and Steven Crowder, have agents and lawyers that are paid to be absolute pit bulls and go to war with each other, negotiating for their clients. I am a small fry YouTuber, and even I at certain points have had agents that have negotiated on my behalf. 
and they get a percentage of the deal. So it is in their best interest that I get the best deal. And it's obviously in the company that I'm working with their best interest to make the best deal for them. So I am not criticizing that system. I think that in a way, iron sharpens iron and that if both parties come to a you know extremely hard fought agreement, it's probably in the best interest of everyone that that happens, but that's how it works. So yes, the contracts, the first revisions generally are pretty aggressive with their demands, knowing they'll have to back off some, knowing that they have points where, you know, oh, well, we'll, you know, we'll take this away and give you this. That's how this works. It's how it's always worked. It's how it will always work. Um, and this is not news to Steven Crowder, which is, again, another extremely disingenuous thing because he has also been around the YouTube space for a long time and has seen his fair share of contracts. The next shady thing is in the middle of Steven Crowder's fight against Big Con. Uh, he is immediately pitching for your email address. Now, what a lot of people don't know about online media companies like The Daily Wire or Steven Crowder or really anybody is that your email address, having a valid email address to your audience members is incredibly valuable. Um, it's actually something I have probably goofed on. I should have probably grown an email list myself, but having a direct way to contact your audience is incredibly useful because not only is it good to like help sell merchandise and just to you know, remind people you still exist. But those email lists, a lot of the times, whether you like it or not, or whether they say they do or they don't, will get sold. Where, I don't know, let's say Steven Crowder would sell his email list of conservative voters to someone that would want to market something to conservative voters or to a politician. Or, I'm not saying they do this. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this happens, but it has happened in the past. Um, email lists are absolutely very, very valuable, which is why Steven Crowder's last employer did not give him the email list to his old audience because it's very valuable. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of Steven Crowder's actions with, with the artsy appeal and the us versus them shit really does remind me of something similar to like the Athene era of YouTube and like together to the top and dim kids. And I don't know, it just, it's given me that vibe onto the next shady thing. And that is that Steven Crowder and the daily wire have known each other for like a decade. Anybody that's kept up with either of these two knows that they've done crossover things in the past and seemingly have been two peas in a pod. So for him to all of a sudden throw the daily wire out as the other and the bad guys and it's us versus them is just quite frankly bizarre and then to secretly record a conversation between a guy from the daily wire and himself to where he is quite obviously trying to farm clips and sound bites out of this guy that does not know he's being recorded is just unbelievably shitty and I think that Steven Crowder has genuinely, uh, maybe he doesn't know this, but as somebody that's seen this happen, I think he may have poisoned the well for himself for future deals with other people because other people are going to see this and be like, I don't think I want to work with this guy. Um, maybe he knows that and maybe this is just his plan and his strategy because he was always wanting to do his own thing and he wasn't afraid to burn a few bridges to get there, but man, it is a terrible look. And uh, YouTube has always, at least in the past, there has always been like a, an element of honor amongst thieves with YouTubers. Uh, maybe it's because I'm a 2010 YouTuber and things were just different back then, but there was always three golden rules when it came to working with other YouTubers and lines you didn't cross. You could talk shit about each other, all that stuff, but the first thing you never did is you never linked private dms you never took screenshots of private messages another thing you never did is you never recorded people when they did not know they were being recorded two things he's done and the third thing you never do is that you never went after people's sponsors you never went after the money those were the three golden rules and unfortunately it seems like nowadays those rules are not rules anymore it seems like the space is just ruthless and anything is fair game and quite frankly I am extremely surprised that somebody as successful as Steven Crowder has 
gone so low. I mean, he knows how the sausage is made. Like, it's just, it's incredibly disingenuous. Like, he, you can't have the level of success he has and not just, I'm, I'm not convinced that he believes the industry works the way he's portraying. Like, he knows how it works. He, he, me, he knows how it works, which is why it's so frustrating to people like me that he's pretending that he doesn't. So, uh, Steven Crowder is absolutely trying to have his cake and eat it too. He wants to have all the independence, but also have the security of working for someone else. And that is bullshit. You got to pick one, dude. You can't be independent, but also have the security of the mega corporation. So, uh, again, I like both Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire. I think they are overall a net positive to the uh, landscape of ideas. I want everyone to be able to say everything. Um, I give the Daily Wire a lot of shit for being the stereotypical no fun having uh, squares who don't get any pussy. You know, Daily Wire guys, they're just not very fun. Um, they do, I do like their videos and takes on a lot of things, but man, they really are just a bunch of fucking Bible beating, boring squares. Like, I don't know how else to say it, but it's undeniable. Their success is undeniable. They have a million paying subscribers. I think the Daily Wire is like, what, 15, you know, 10, 10, 15 bucks a month. They have a million people paying that every month. And the Daily Wire actually makes money. Like they are not a loss leader. From my understanding, they actually turn a profit. Whether it's much money or not doesn't even matter because the fact that they even are in the green at all is amazing. Because they're one of the few that even are. And I suspect that the Daily Wire is one of the biggest media companies in the online space. And I would not be surprised if they're just one of the biggest media companies in general in the next five to 10 years. It would not surprise me if they are damn near as big as something like Fox News in the next 10 years. It would not surprise me. So the Daily Wire is absolutely a successful business. They know how to keep the lights on. And that's why Steven Crowder wanted to join them in the first place. He wanted the security of working for the Daily Wire, but he did not want to play ball with the Daily Wire and actually be realistic with what that looks like. And yes, that means that your contract is going to have a performance incentive in it, meaning that you're not going to get all $50 million of your contract if your YouTube channel gets banned and you just can't make videos for three years out of the four years of your contract. That's why you don't see professional athletes get to be like 300 pounds and, and not be able to play, but still get all the money. This is how the, this is how the world works. There's usually some performance incentives to keep everybody honest and, you know, providing value for both sides of the uh, agreement. So, uh, this whole thing seems incredibly desperate from Steven Crowder. I am curious to know if there's more behind the scenes with Steven Crowder that we don't know because this whole move seems bizarre. Everything about this just seems utterly bizarre. I don't think n no one in this situation is ignorant to the, to the business of YouTube. They're both of these guys are extremely successful. So for Steven Crowder to like LARP as somebody that doesn't, understand why this is the way it is is just hilarious to me so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below uh i do think this will continue to develop and i'm curious to see what uh steven crowder's next moves are and what and if this was some sort of weird master plan or if this is just flailing in desperation because uh it's pretty bizarre to me Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe with notifications on, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join the Discord. It's free.